She is a PhD candidate at the Technical University of Munich, where she started at the beginning of this year. She is working on the development of tiny ML applications under the supervision of Professor Daniel Müller in the chair of Electronic Design Automation. Thanks so, for the introduction. Looking forward for your presentation. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Samuel. And, uh, I'm here for presenting my paper on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, for presenting my paper on towards rapid exploration of heterogeneous time systems using neutral platforms and uh, TBM Zoom. This work uh, has been developed as a part of a uh, Europa Pentop project named uh, COMI and is funded by the uh, German Ministry of Education and Research. Okay. First, um, I'm giving you an, uh, a brief introduction and uh, a respective background on new interface and human dialect, and then I uh, walk you through approach. Uh, Um, and uh, also one of the main um, techniques for um, increasing the efficiencies hard using the hardware accelerators. Uh, some of the hardware accelerators uh, have their own compilation tools, and some of them uh, don't any. And um, using the hardware acceleration leads us to um, heterogeneous systems. Uh, however. Uh, we can use benchmarking solutions to help in uh, sorry, to uh, help to estimate the performance and find the most optimal combination of, of uh, the targets. But uh, we know that um, compilation tool chains and benchmarking solutions for uh, heterogeneous systems are at their early stages. Okay. No. I can't find my. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, some of the state of art uh, deep learning compilers are TF Lite, XLA, GLO, and TV. Uh, TVM has been evaluated as uh, uh, one of the uh, leading solutions for supporting heterogeneous tiny ML systems. Uh, it offers um, two extensions uh, in, in, uh, concerning hardware accelerators. Uh, first one is Bring Your Own Code Gen or BYOC. Uh, that allows the developers to target new libraries and uh, new hardware accelerators. And the second one is Universal uh, Modular Accelerator, or UMA. And we have a problem with using uh, BYC. Uh, when we use BYC, we have to get involved with the complexities of uh, TBM's integration process. But uh, UMA simplifies the integration process using Python APS. So in this work, first I um, use I investigate new minds uh, capabilities for integrating new hardware accelerators, and uh, mm, we also investigated for uh, quantized neural networks. Second, secondly, we um, use LNMCU as a benchmarking tool capable of virtual prototyping that also uh, is developed by uh, EDHR of Technical University of. Monique, 
And uh, generally speaking, our goal is integrating Yuma and NLCU's capability of virtual prototyping to explore the performance improved achieved by an accelerator for uh, quantized neural networks. Okay, moving forward to the background. Uh, Yuma is an easy-to-use structure to integrate new hardware accelerators into TPM by providing file structures, Python interface classes, and an uh, API. Uh, so it um, enables the straightforward uploading of specific operator patterns uh, to Anchip accelerators while uh, the remaining operators are executed on CPU. This, show, uh, this um, figure shows the uh, Yuma components and how it works in TVM. Uh, I'm not going into detail too much. And uh, here you see two components of, uh, Yuma, of Yuma, Yuma partitioner and Yuma pipeline that are dealing with the high level and low level uh, intermediate representation of TVM, uh, meaning relay and tensor intermediate representation or TIR. Uh, first, Yuma partitioner takes the relay graph of the loaded model, machine learning model. Uh, it separates the um, supported operators from unsupported operators. Unsupported operators uh, follow the uh, TVM default pipeline, while uh, the supported operators uh, goes to the Yuma pipeline. First, we have the lowering to TIR um, <coughs> using tensor operator inventory implementations or custom schedules. Then uh, some uh, user-defined uh, user uh, TIR paths uh, should be added to uh, construct the external call function of, uh, of the accelerator. Then we have the TVM function that generates the C code of the inference function of the machine learning model that including uh, the um, invoked functions by both CPU and accelerator. Okay, uh, the second topic that I'm talking about in uh, background is quantized neural network. Uh, you know that one of the popular techniques for improves, uh, increased efficiency, resource efficiency is uh, int 8 uh, quantization. Uh, initially, TVM uh, was designed for optimizing just floating point 32 bit uh, operators, and it uh, doesn't, uh, ha didn't have any uh, built in support for uh, in quantized int 8 uh, operators. So, in uh, I guess 2020, uh, Kionel dialect was uh, introduced to extend TVM's internal representation with the quantization context. It's a higher level IR layered on top of the um, graph level IR of TVM. Uh, the left picture uh, shows how it um, fits into TVM. First, we have a, a framework dependent parcel that is responsible for parsing um, the framework model into a QNN graph, a mixture of QNN and relay operators using uh, defined QNN operators or QNN operators inventory. Uh, after that, the main part is canonical, canonicalization pass that uh, tries to break down the QNN operators to uh, a sequence of uh, existing relay operators in TVM. Uh, actually, it acts as a boundary that after that we don't see any quantization uh, context. And finally, it generates the pure relay graph. And it, now we, from here on, we can use the existing TVM infra infrastructure to uh, lower to TIR and um, code generation. Uh, the right picture shows an example of TF Lite uh, and how it converted to some sequence of uh, relay uh, operators. We have a TF Lite composed convolution that uh, uh, is parsed to four functions, to QNM operators and to uh, relay operators. Uh, for example, canonicalization, you can see that can uh, break down the QNM comp to the base, uh, of course, based on a description that users should uh, provide to TVN, to uh, some of the uh, same relay operators. Okay, now, uh, uh, so we want to add a Mm, simple accelerator using Yuma to TBM and then uh, run some uh, quantized model uh, on it. Uh, and I want to show you 
it uh, as an approach. Uh, so first I, I should say that uh, a human group uh, introduced uh, vanilla accelerator that's a simple um, mock accelerator uh, and it can uh, process uh, floating point uh, convolution operators. Uh, we use this example and expand it to support uh, quantized int8 uh, operators. The support operators are quantized uh, convolution and bias addition. Uh, consider this picture as our uh, target arch architecture. Uh, consists of a CPU and q one accelerator that share uh, memory uh, and want to offload the, support, the supported operator patterns to q one while other operators uh, are proposed. Be processed by CP. Okay, uh, here you can see the new integration process. First, we should generate the backend structure of the new accelerator using uh, UMAC online interface. And then uh, we should define the necessary patterns to annotate and partition the supported operators for this example, QNN conf to the a composite function of QNN conf to the end by a addition. And then uh, we maybe need uh, some PDO post uh, partitioning paths in the relay IAR, uh, like memory layout conversion. For example, if you use TensorFlow uh, Lite models, they are by default uh, channel less. And if your accelerator just support the channel first memory layout, you have to add a relay path here for um, convert layout. Then uh, for lowering to TIR. If uh, there is no topic tel implementation, uh, we have to add a computation and a schedule in terms of a strategy to lower the, uh, for example, the quantized operat operators to TIR level. Then uh, we need the TIR passes, some TIR passes to um, extract the required pattern parameters. Uh, from the TR functions based on the strategy that uh, we defined in the previous step and uh, construct the external function of the accelerator to interface the generated code and the accelerator. And finally, we need to add the code interface or driver of our custom accelerator. Here in this process, um, these two uh, highlighted, highlighted with red color uh, are very important, uh, for example, especially for uh, quantized operators and to be careful about them. Okay, next section is uh, virtual prototyping. Okay, I said that we use MMCU uh, as a benchmarking tool for the deployment of, uh, that uh, are necessary for, here we use it for deployment of uh, machine learning. Uh, it supports uh, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers and uh, TBM as TinyML frameworks. It also uh, supports uh, ETS target uh, extendable translating ISS that here it, it's utilized to simulate a 32 bit risk by microcontroller. Here in this picture, you can see the deployment fellow. Uh, we load the pre um, our pre quantized um, model into LMCU. Uh, LNCU use uh, the combination of TDM and UMA uh, to optimize, compile, and uh, generate the C code of the inference function of the model. And then we have, uh, we should, the CPU uh, execute the C code and uh, the driver of the, our accelerator, uh, and then um, the support operators uh, can be offloaded on the accelerator. Here we use the ETA target to uh, simulate the CPU and accelerator and yield a virtual, a virtual uh, prototype of uh, target. Okay, uh, ETA has a plugin mechanism to add new uh, functionality into the simulation. Uh, we use this mechanism to, to integrate QVanilla as a memory mapped peripheral uh, within ETA. This picture shows our virtual, uh, virtual platform, and the color block shows showcase different uh, parts of uh, the q vanilla accelerator. Uh, for example, you can see the register interface for accelerator configuration, accelerator controller, and uh, the computation part of um, for calculating comp to the and 
and voice addition, and finally, load the store unit or loading and store data from to memory. Okay, uh, finally, the evaluation and conclusion of the work. Uh, so here we used MLMC to simulate uh, our um, target architecture and deploy uh, some pre quantized models on it and also we use it to explore our, our design. Here in this work, we uh, executed uh, um, ML pair of tiny ML benchmarks like ResNet, uh, Visual Work Board, and uh, uh, keyboard spotting applications. And this table shows uh, the uh, resulting CPU, CPU instruction uh, count. Uh, for each of these models, uh, um, <coughs> for either running on uh, CPU, uh, solely on CPU, or on the combination of the CPU and accelerator. Here you can see that we uh, saved uh, about 75% of CPU instructions for ResNet, and 65% ResNet for 65% uh, for uh, VWW, and 63% for AWW. Uh, this um, uh, CPU insertion comes for simulated risk file in microcontroller. We also here uh, show the simulation time that is measured on the x86 pass. And, um, this is for the running the models on uh, the combination of the CPU and accelerator. And it's clear, clearly both of uh, CPU insertion and simulation time shows a significant reduction. Uh, for each model. Uh, this slide also shows a student project that's a work on. Uh, I should, I have to say this that this um, this result is um, uh, for running the models on uh, CPU and accelerator while the accelerator operations are zero second. Here we have a student's project that's work on adding timing to the model accelerator to make it more uh, realistic. We use the MAC operations to estimate a target time for uh, execution of uh, convolution layers on, um, the, on the custom accelerator. Here in this chart, the vertical axis shows the instructions uh, for uh, AWW, AWW model and the horizontal axis shows uh, cycle per MAC. Uh, the red line shows um, the number of cycles uh, or instructions for running the model, AWW model on CPU only, while the cycle per instruction is one. Um, the blue line shows uh, the resulting cycles for running uh, in the model on uh, both accelerator and um, uh, CPU uh, for different cycle per MAC. And uh, it shows that. If you, if we, um, for example, uh, choose uh, 0 0.5 cycle per MAC, uh, you can see that we uh, can save half of the cycles for running this model on um, our target architecture. Okay. Uh, and lastly, the conclusion. Uh, here we saw that Yuma provides interfaces to facilitate the process of integration of uh, hardware accelerators. We um, expanded the vanilla uh, backend to enable the execution of quantized models. And also, we utilized the MLMC tool to estimate the performance improvement of inference achieved by the accelerator. And uh, overall, combination of virtual prototyping and TVM Zuma looks very promising for enabling the exploration and simulation of new hardware accelerators. Architectures. So, um, thanks for paying attention to my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm going to Thanks for the very interesting presentation, Samira. Do we have questions? So, first of all, great work. I think that's really an improvement of the human interface. Thanks, Lai. So my question would be, could you elaborate a bit on the integration of Q&M nodes in um, the graph? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
And here for any of the QAnon operators, first we need to uh, find the respective QAnon operators uh, in the uh, inventory of the TVM for, uh, for the pattern matching. Then uh, for um, strategies here, we used, uh, because our, uh, at the first step, our uh, implementation for the customizer was just a static C library, and then we move forward to LNC and our picture side. So here we use the uh, hexagon strategies for lowering the QAnon count to do some uh, tier functions. And um, the tier passes also, we, based on the hexagon strategy, we just extract the um, corresponding block of tier function and replace it with the external call, um, call function of the accelerator. I'm not sure if I, I understand your question. Yeah, thanks. Any additional question? Yes. Um, yeah, assuming a flat memory happened here, right? So, I mean, everything is accessible. You have a huge flat memory or something, both by the accelerator and the CPU. So I'm just wondering, are you also looking into systems and the, the mapping using Luma if you have more hierarchical uh, memory hierarchy? I mean, is this something that you look at? Uh, actually, I have not yet looked into this section. And here in ETOS, we just have a, we don't have a memory in ETOS. It just has some interface to some, um, to some model memory and uh, just that. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the next step. Any additional question? Yes, no more. Are you planning to bring this to back into your open source community? And yeah, it's uh, it's already it is, and I put the link, the GitHub link in the paper, but I uh, forgot to bring it here in my presentation, but um, it's. Open source. Yeah, <laughs> one last question. I actually have one. <laughs> so um, it was interesting that you you connected the topic of uh, AI accelerators with different prototypes and different simulations on. So um, so far I, I have not seen too much in this direction. So I was wondering if where, when you were doing your work, you also saw let's say a wider community working in this direction. That was one question. And what are the next steps for? Uh, I guess the next step would be and uh, somehow for a more this accelerator is very simple mm -hmm. but we um, the next step would be adding a formal accelerator mm -hmm. and it's uh, not very straightforward to doing uh, uh, by hand coded and uh, going through the TBM stack uh, and change all the tier passes and uh, all of this in TBM. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be um, working on a um, backend generator using Yuma. Okay. It can automate and facilitate all the process. That's very interesting. Looking yeah, forward for those developments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, once again.